Zephyr met Dale in 1984. It was not long before they were talking marriage. Zephyr informed Dale that he had a calling he thought she should be informed of. Dale said to Zephyr, if what you have to do is for God, then I will help you. Zephyr responded to Dale, then we can get married. It was determined the answer to the calling was to inform our people of the knowledge of their human potential. This knowledge is best expressed through the rights of Hodge. Sophia embarked on the journey of studying the rights of Hodge. The results of his research was a book. Dale took the responsibility to get the book edited, published, and printed. The book is titled Hodge from Adam to Abraham. In the publishing of the book on Hodge, Sophia wrote a dedication and a special acknowledgement. This book is dedicated to the potential that exists in every human being. It is understood that every person is born with a God-given potential. That potential is unknown, but discoverable during the journey of life. This book is an attempt to assess the potential in its self-discovery. Special Acknowledgement I would like to make this special acknowledgement to my partner for life, my wife of 30 years, at the publishing of this book, Dale Robb. Dale is a woman whom I love, and I am so grateful for her agreeing to assist me in answering my calling from God. We made it a precondition of our marriage. Once the definition of my calling was revealed to me, she said, if what you have to do is for God, then I will help you. In this acknowledgement, I openly bear witness to all who read or hear of this writing that Dale kept her word. I no longer consider the writing of this book just as the answer to my calling. I now know that it is the collective effort of what God is doing together. Knowing this, let no one put it asunder. Thank you, Dale. In order to promote the book of Hodge, Sophia and Dale visited several places. Dale hosted a number of events at the house. She also recorded events in other cities. Dale accompanies Sophia to the city of Philadelphia. He first told me that he had it. Um, it is a must read. Whether you've been to Hodge or you have yet to go to Hodge, it's a must read. Uh, if you want a true insight on not just the physical rights, but the spiritual side of the rights of Hodge, inshallah, you have to read this book, inshallah. Um, so without further ado, we're going to call our brother, Imam Haji Safi Rao, out of Baltimore. Hi, Assalamu uh, the brother guy uh, said that uh, we just recently published this book uh, on Hajj. Uh, but when they were calling out the, um, the year that we made the Hajj, I, I stood up with 1981. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah hi rabbil alayhi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa 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 wa la Openly testify there is no God worthy of worship but the one God that we know as Allah. And openly testify that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is his true servant and his last apostle. I greet you. I stand I should give you some of my background as to, and the reason why I want to do this is because it affects my hunch, which is really what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I come to Islam through uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad in Baltimore uh, in 1967. And um, I was a young man at the time, and I uh, joined the Nation of Islam 
eventually became the captain. Uh, in 1975, you know that Imam Muhammad passed away. Imam J.B.D. Muhammad uh, took delegation on Hajj. I went in the 81 delegation. And uh, while I was there, being a former captain, I also was a teacher in the uh, University of Islam. I used to teach mathematics. And I had an engineering background. And I'm at Mecca, in Mecca, wondering how is this going to get me paradise? I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's one of the things that you should not do, and there's doubt that you would not be forgiven all of your sins. So I think I want to inform the Hajis that uh, one of the most wicked people there is is one who performed the rites of Hajj, spend the night with the Hijra on earth, and don't believe they're sinless. So for those who intend to go to Hajj, once you spend the night with the Hijra on earth, all of your sins are wiped away. Dale accompanies Safir to the city of Houston. It is universally recognized that Arafat is Hajj and Hajj is Arafat. Dale accompanies Safir to the city of Mecca. That is the same as yours. And there's nothing about yours and the same as mine except that we perform the same rituals. But the reason why we perform the ritual is because we were before we were even assigned to a body. Allah has already inscribed in us what our purpose in life will be and what we will do. So when we come to Hajj, he informs that. And we learn to put what we learn here with what our purpose is whenever we go back for him. Dale and Safir received an invitation from the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Timeline. Dale and Safir secure their visa. Dale and Safir make travel arrangements. Dale and Safir get into Ihram when they arrive at Jeddah. They perform Umrah and they perform Hajj. When Dale and Safir arrived in Mecca, the first thing they did was to perform Umrah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Muhtaram Nazarin Kasehe, Nid Katahu ke Absab Kariya Sehunge. This Wakata Bilkul Hatime Kaba Kesam Nesedekri. Mashallah. After Dale and Safir went around the Kaaba seven times, they drank from the well of Zamzam. The well of Zamzam, the longest standing well on earth that gushed out in an arid valley under the feet of Ishmael, peace be upon him, to quench his thirst. Lady Hagar contained its water. Otherwise, it would have become a river flowing forever. 21 meters is the distance between Zamzam well and the Holy Kaaba. Its depth is 30 meters. It pumps 18 liters of water per second as a maximum. In the Saudi era, a building was built around the well during the rule of King Abdul Aziz to facilitate people's access to the well. Then, the building was turned to a basement to which people descended. Under King Fayyad, the basement was closed and a mark was placed to show the location of the well and upgrading to the best water storing, pumping, and distribution systems. The surroundings of the well are sterilized including the remains of the old basement of the Grand Mosque. After Dale and Safiya drank from the well of Zamzam, they went between Safa and Marwa seven times.
After Dale and Sophia performed their salutation umrah, they went until Mina and waited until the 8th of Dhul Hijjah. On the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, Dale and Sophia again adorned themselves in Ihram and started the rites of Hajj. After the sun passed its zenith, Dale and Sophia embarked on to Arafat. Dale went with the sisters and Sophia went with the brothers. One of the reasons Arafat is so significant to the rites of Hajj is that it is the place where Adam and Eve met when they were put out of paradise. Sophia was given a book review in Oakland, California and was asked a question about Arafat. The following is a question and answer period after a book review was given by Sophia Robb on the subject of Hajj, part three. To construct the Kaaba in your heart? Yes. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Well, the Kaaba is known as, as and he, uh, this is the one time the Imam corrected me when I wrote that, when I put the article. <laughs> Not refer to the Kaaba as the house of Allah. We should refer to the Kaaba as the house built by Abraham and Ismael. So I'm glad you asked that question. I, I should have told you that because, because when, you know, when, when the Imam says, when the Imam chastised, you just chastised. He wrote another article the next week and corrected it. But because the Kaaba was built by Abraham and Ismael, I'm going to highlight Abraham represents rational religious faith. If you look at how Abraham found the law, he went through a rationale. He, first he took the moon for his God, took the stars for it, took the sun, but he finally concluded that the creator of all of these things was his God, which is Allah. Ismael represents faith because he never questioned when Abraham said, I see in a dream that I should sacrifice you. He said to hear is to obey. So we see that if Abraham and Ishmael built the physical Kaaba, we don't look at just two personalities, but we look at what these personalities represent in our human potential. So the Kaaba should be the focus by which we direct our attention to the worship of Allah. This is what we all practice. When we come into the masjid, we make salat, we turn towards the Kaaba. We, we, we call it the uh, Kibla. So, we should do so with the house that we build inside of us. With our rational religious understanding and our faith. I don't care if our faith is a baby which is what Ishmael was. We should be about the business of constructing the Kaaba inside of us and focusing the tension towards the worship of Allah. Uh, did I answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, As-salamu as alaykum. Wa alaykum as Yeah, so um, you, you mentioned that you I went on the Hajj for the first time 41 years ago, but that you went a second time. Yes. How did you approach it differently the second time you went when you were much more knowledgeable about the meanings of the rites of Hajj? Okay, I'm glad you asked that question. I really am. I'm going to tell you a story about that second time. I have a son that was murdered 26 years ago. And he... He was Muslim. So I told my wife that I'm going to escort you on Hajj as your Makran, and I'm going to make Hajj for him. So the second time I went, I went, I made Hajj for him. And be true with you, I just was more interested in observing my wife because she had been studying Hajj with me for 37 years. Right. And I was more interested in the effects of her. 
And that's what we did. But the story I'm going to tell you is, we were on Arafat. And she said, she gave me a phone call. We had cell phones this time. This was two years ago. She said, stop here. I'm in a room with a whole bunch of women. And um, I went outside, and I, I saw some buses about two blocks down the street, and one of them had a number eight on it. I said, well, I'm in a room with a bunch of guys. So uh, I come out, and I go looking for where these buses are parked at. So finally, I get to uh, the place where I see the buses, and I look for the number eight on one of the buses, and I did. So I looked, there was an aisleway with some buildings at the end of that aisleway. I walked down that building, down that down aisleway, and I got, got down there, and I saw the building. She was outside waiting. So I said, her name is Dale. I said, Dale, do you know what this means? She said, no, what do it mean to you, Sophia? I said, this means that I can say I met my wife at Arafat. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. That was it. And uh, that was really uh, the highlight of my life, <laughs> to tell you the truth. God said, I don't even know one other person who did that. That was that. <laughs> um, but later on, when we came home, I asked, I said, Dale, I feel comfortable that I met my wife at Arafat. But I got a question for you. She said, what is that? I said, did you meet your husband? <laughs> I say, and I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about your faith, your iman. Did it get acquainted with the community of yourself? She said, yes. Why do you think I stop arguing with you? <laughs> See, I turn you over to a lot. I got something for you. And so um, I just think that's a, a more practical way of putting it for the, for the males and the females. Uh, your faith should meet your desires and they should cohabitate in this earth as it is seeking the pleasure of Allah trying to earn its way back to paradise. F1. After we left Arafat, we went to Musalafa. We stoned the Jamirat. We made another Umrah and we paid for our sacrifice to complete the rites of Hajj.